Welcome. In this video, we're going to go over the basics of how to play Dinogenix and finish up with a playthrough of one of the solo scenarios. The Dinogenix is a worker placement game where players take on the role of a multi billion dollar corporation competing to build the most successful dinosaur park. Each player owns a private island and takes turns deploying workers to areas of the mainland where they collect resources to enhance their parks. At the end of seven rounds, the park with the most victory points is deemed the winner and acquires enough market shares to buy out their competitors. So we're going to start with basic setup, then go through a typical round, and then get into a solo play. So set up. Let's put our main board out on the table. Then we're going to separate out the eight basic hotels here, which look like this. Shows it can hold two visitors, cost three credits to purchase, and at the end of the game, zero victory points. We will place that in the city center. We'll then take the DNA cards, which houses all the DNA for our dinosaurs, give them a shuffle, and place them out on the board. And do the same thing for the manipulation deck, which is just gonna be special one-time use cards. And the breaking news cards, which is gonna bring up different types of events throughout the game. We'll go down here in the newsroom. Then we're going to fill up the DNA market down here, just taking the top three cards, placing them down in this area. So we've got an Ankylosaurus, Tyrannosaurus, and another Ankylosaurus there. Then we'll take the top four cards and place those in the boneyard. And then flip over the top breaking news story, put that in the upcoming area. So we can see in the next round, workers cannot be played to the farm this season. Then each player will choose a faction, which is gonna consist of five worker meeples, two faction discs, and then two cubes. Depending on the number of players, we'll set up for a two player game. We're only gonna start with four workers. So we'll place them down on our personal island board. Place one of our faction tokens on the visitor board and the other one on the victory point track. So it's got a track going from zero all the way around to 99 around the edge of the board. And then for our cubes, we'll put one in a zero spot for reputation and zero spot on our board for dinosaur value. And any other opponents will do the same thing. So our visitor board is gonna track our seasons so as every season goes by, it's going to determine how many visitors we get to our park. It's going to track our reputation track, which will determine our first player. But just to start off with, we'll just randomly pick first and second player and have this covering that spot. And we pick A for one, two, or three player game. There's a B side for four and five player games. Then for our personal island, it's separated. We have an area to put facilities in the park. Then our commercial area, We've got a spot for all our workers. A quick cheat sheet for our dinosaurs for victory points, reputation, and how big their pin needs to be. And then a tracker for our dinosaur value. then depending on the number of players, some of these workspaces will be covered up with blocking tokens. So since we're playing for with two players, any that has a three plus or four plus will be covered up. So we will not be able to place workers in those areas. Each player will then get four fences to put up to create a starting pin. So it really doesn't matter where you put it on the board, we just want to make one square cage there. And like I said, for a two player game, we're gonna start with four workers. First player is gonna get three credits and the second player will get four credits. And that will complete setup. On the back of our park operations manual, it does have a quick reference guide for going through the seasons. So like I said, this is going to take seven seasons to go through. Each season is going to have an open season and an upkeep phase. During the first 
season of the game, we're going to skip to step six. But just for this tutorial, we're going to pretend we're already in season two and get started with how to play. So step one, determine player order based on reputation. So assuming something happened during the game and one player had more reputation than the other, you'll adjust as so. And then tiles are broken by the number of undamaged facilities and credits. Then we will assign visitors based on the board. So since we are active in season two, first player is gonna get two visitors, second player is gonna get two, and there's gonna be two bonus visitors. So right now on our board, we just have one hotel that can hold two players or visitors. So each player is gonna get two. As shown by this, player one gets two, player two also gets two, and we have two bonus visitors. And the way they work is player one gets the option to take up to two of these, but we don't have room for them. If we did have a hotel in place, we could take both. But since we don't, then the next player can take one and we'll keep doing that until either of these are gone or everyone's had a chance to take some. And then the remaining two in this case will not show up at a park. Then each player is gonna receive one credit for each visitor in their park. So we have two visitors, two more credits. Then we will resolve the next breaking news card. So the one that was upcoming, we'll move over to active and we'll follow through with this. So workers cannot pl be played to the farm this season. We'll go through each of the working areas here in a bit. Then we'll flip over the next one so we can see the upcoming event. So in this case, there's a massive building project canceled over zoning dispute. We can play a worker to an empty action space on this card to gain five fences at the cost of one credit. Then we will draw one random tile to each of the second, third, and fourth facility stacks in the city center. So over here is the city center. We'll take our nice Dinogenics bag, which has all the facilities in it. Take out three and we'll place those in those areas. And each of these is gonna have a cost, victory points at the end, and if it gets damaged, we'll flip over and see we're not getting any bonus from that. Some cards will have an ability you get the end of every upkeep phase. And then some you're just gonna have to check the reference chart, but you can see here, this has a victory point of green. So when you do play it, it's gonna go out in the park. This one down here is in the gray, which means it's gonna go on the commercial side. But for right now, we'll just place these out in the city center. And now we're getting to where the bulk of the game is gonna be. In player order, place one worker per turn until none remain. So we're gonna go back and forth in a two player game of putting workers out on the board. So let's go over each of the actions. So one of the areas we can go to is a farm and that very simply is just going to give us three goats. And in this game, goats are food for our carnivores and we can just place them as a resource next to our island board. Going over to site B, it's gonna let us draw three cards, keep one and then discard the other two. So we will look at three DNA cards, decide which one we wanna keep. I like keeping a nice peaceful stegosaurus and the other two will be discarded. And while the rules don't state this, uh, the designer does suggest discarding face down. So other people can't figure out what you're trying to do. Another place we can go to is the Dinogenics IOM. Here we can complete a set to place a dinosaur or for three mixed dinosaurs, place a mutant. So basically these cards are gonna show you the dinosaur name and how many cards of that type you need to create. So we'll look through here. So if we went to Dinogenics and we had these in hand, we'd be able to discard those, find our dinosaur meeple and place that in our island. Or we could discard three cards of any type to place a mutant meeple in our island. So once we do place a dinosaur in our area, we will update our dinosaur value to keep track of during the upkeep phase. We're also gonna gain reputation on our track. So this one gives us two. 
And ideally, before we built a stegosaurus, we would have built some more fences to make it so we wouldn't rampage as soon as we put them in. Stegosauruses want to be in a fenced-in area that's at least two squares in size. Next, we can go to the outsource location, and there we spend two credits. Put that back in the bank. Then we can use a different occupied space on the board as if we had played there. Or we can go to the boneyard. Here we're going to get a scandal token. These are bad. These are worth negative six points at the end of the game. So we don't want to get too many of those. But we do get to pick up one of these dinosaur DNAs from the boneyard. So say we want to get ready to build a nice T-Rex. We'll put that in our hand and put those back down. Then at the agency, we get to draw two manipulation cards and discard up to one scandal token. Then jumping over to the uplink, we can play one manipulation card from our hand, just following the directions on that. Down at site A, we get to draw two DNA cards and keep them both. Down at the timeshare, we are going to get a credit and one visitor, and we can only go here if we have room to put the visitor. And then going over to the ferry gets us three credits. And our last location is the city center, where we can perform two different actions of the four listed here. One of those being purchase a facility, so we can pay the price shown and put that in our park, depending on where this is. So like I said, for victory points at the end of the game, if it's gray, it goes in our commercial side. And if it's in the green, it goes into our park side. The other possible action is we can pay three credits to repair facilities. So if a dinosaur goes on a rampage and destroys it, we can pay three to put it back on our board, ready to score victory points. We can use the market to either buy a dinosaur from the market or sell a dinosaur from our hand to the market. So if we're purchasing, we're just paying the price listed here under the buy and the dinosaur in the last area has a discount of two credits. So this guy would just cost us two. And if we were selling, we would gain the sell price. So four credits for the T-Rex and he would push everything else down. And if you ever sold and all the spaces were full, push all these over and this one gets pushed over to the boneyard. And the last of the possible actions is spending two credits to purchase three fences. And when purchasing fences, we can place those anywhere on the board. We can also move existing fences and dinosaurs. So whenever you're getting more fences to put on, you can rearrange both existing fences and dinosaurs. But if you had facilities in play, once they are placed, they are stuck in that one location. So then it comes down to proper habitats. What is gonna prevent our dinosaurs from rampaging? We'll make a hypothetical scenario here, bring in some more fences. So here we've got a one space fenced in area, two space, three fenced, and then a biodome, which has some special rules. So for the biodome, it counts as a fence pen of any size for up to two compatible dinosaurs, satisf satisfies the pterodactyl habitat requirements. So like we looked at before, the stegosaurus needs a pen size of two. So if we put him in this space, he's gonna rampage. He's not gonna be happy being put in that small space. So we need to put him over here. And each square can typically only hold one dinosaur, but the biodome does break that. We can put two of the happy dinosaurs in that area without rampaging. So if we played another stegosaurus, here, not happy. Over here, it's three and it's fine. And here's fine. Size is two, and as long as they are cohabitating, same species in an area, they will get along just fine. So the Tyrannosaurus needs three spaces to be happy. 
So once again, you just put in here, not a happy dinosaur, over here, it's in an area of three. All's gonna go well. Pterodactyl, needs a space of one, must be housed in a biodome to fulfill its habitat requirement. So we put it over here and he's a happy pterodactyl. Then the Ankylosaurus can share a habitat with any species without either rampaging. So he needs a size of two. So over here, he's gonna rampage. And here, he can coexist with that guy and it meets the sizing requirements. And since the biodome counts as a fence pin of any size, two compatible dinosaurs can exist there. So we can have either the Ankylosaurus in there or we could have two pterodactyls and everything would be good. So if we went to build a Triceratops, he just needs a size of one and then he's happy. But hypothetically, if these gates were not there, he's gonna end up rampaging on us, which is bad. So we could put him in a fenced in area. That's certainly big enough, but then we have two dinosaurs that are not compatible and both of them are going to rampage. So what is rampaging? Each rampaging dinosaur is gonna roll one of these rampaging dice, except for the T-Rex. He's gonna roll two dice during a rampage check and suffer both results consecutively. So in this scenario, Triceratops, and yes, this is a bad play. If I was gonna put him out, I'd just put him out in the open and have him rampage by himself. But just to show you how bad things can go, we'll do the T-Rex first. So in this facing, it's the worst result we can get. The player rolls this, he'll suffer one visitor fatality, which means one person dies, and we've got to try to cover that up so we get a scandal token. The Rampage Slash results in a standard dinosaur attack against park structures. So they must damage one park structure accessible to the dinosaur. So there's no structures here other than walls and it wants to destroy a wall that's gonna let it go outside. So it's not gonna destroy another one that takes it to a pen. It's gonna destroy something going outside. So that would be his Rampage. Then of course we have the Naive Visitor. So this is the only possible outcome. So we've got one naive visitor, two fatalities, and then three slashes. So the naive visitor just assumes the dinosaur's aggression was part of the show. Nothing bad happens, and he pays you an extra credit for such an awesome display of control over the dinosaur island. So making this more standard, and to get our track back into place, each stegosaurus gets us three, so it'd be up to six for the two stegosauruses. Five for each pterodactyl, so 16. And the T-Rex, seven more. So 23. So we finished all of our open season items. So for upkeep, we have to feed all of our carnivores. So our stegosaurus, herbivore, does not need any meat per season. Our pterodactyls, each of them needs one. So we'll feed each of them one goat. And then the T-Rex needs two meat. And unfortunately, we've only got one little goat here. So if we had two, all would be well. But with just one goat, he's not gonna be happy, so he's gonna rampage. Roll if necessary. So he gets two dice, we roll. We trash this place. So that is a fatality death with a scandal, then assign damage to an accessible structure, which is only gonna be fences. Then this is a rampage, so we assign damage to an accessible structure. Well, the only structure he can get to is right here. So he's gonna damage this which then means these two guys are no longer happy because they must be housing a biodome to fulfill their habitat requirements. So then that's gonna trigger both of them going on a rampage. 
So we don't have any fatalities over here since we don't have any more people, but they will destroy another fence. And then the other one, same thing, no fatalities, but they will destroy another fence. And of course I could have taken out one of these fences, but I chose not to have them rampage. So in our next turn, we're definitely gonna have to build some fences and hopefully do some repairs to the biodome. Next, we're gonna gain three victory points for every two visitors leaving the park alive. Well, our two visitors left and they weren't alive, so no victory points for that. We will then gain victory points from dinosaurs and facilities. Well, we've got a track here, so we would gain 23 victory points for our dinosaurs. Our facilities most only give us victory points at the end of the game, but when they're destroyed, they definitely don't give us victory points. So certain facilities will, during upkeep, gain a victory point for each unique species in your parks. So if we had some of these other facilities in, we might be getting some victory points. Then we will gain resources from dinosaurs and facilities. So the stegosaurus, they are crowd pleasers. During the upkeep phase, gain one. We've got two in place. So we'd get some credits for that. Then once again, some facilities during upkeep will get us some additional things. If we had a goat farm, we'd gain a goat meeple. Then for step six, return workers from the board to our owner's park, bringing back all our workers. Then we would advance the visitor overlay one column to the left. And continue to the next open season. Doing that. So we went through our seven seasons, and then in-game scoring. So for in-game scoring, we're gonna get points for our facilities from the lower right-hand corner. We also get three victory points for every dinosaur variety. So for every different type of dinosaur, we'll get three victory points. For every three credits, we'll gain one victory point. Every two DNA cards, get one victory point. Then we will lose six victory points for every scandal token we have. And the player with the most victory points is determined the winner and acquires enough market shares to buy out their competitors. In the event of a tie, the player with the highest reputation at the end of the game wins. And that's the basics for Dinogenics. Now we'll go ahead and set up for one of the 10 solo scenarios. So we can see on this one, we've got a Raptor Escalation and we are gonna be starting the game mid-game with this part set. So this is gonna give us a brief history. So in an effort to capitalize on the dinosaur craze, we have kind of cheated and started a bit early. So our objective is by the end of season seven, all dinosaurs in our park must be in a valid habitat and all of our facilities must be operation. We're gonna start in season four, starts with open season step one. We are gonna have three credits to start with three DNA cards, two manipulation cards, five scandals, so that's not good. We start with two goats, four workers, 12 fences, basic hotel and a watchtower. So we're gonna set up looking like this. The breaking news, we're just gonna use cards three, seven, eight, 16, 17, and 19 and shuffle those. There'll be no active event for the first round. So skip open season step five and season four. Then we've got some special rules. We place five raptors in your starting pin as shown. Uh, place one additional blocking token on action space at the farm. So the farmer only gonna have one open space to get the three goats. And because we start in season four, we immediately gain our fifth worker. And then some visitor rules. These replace steps one to three of each open season. So step one to three, your park receives visitors equal to half rounded up of your max hotel capacity. And then for final score, basically as long as we're in po positive numbers, we will win. And then there's just varying degrees of how good we did. All right, almost ready to get going here. Got our visitor board set up starting in season four. Our three starting credits. DNA cards, we are gonna start with three. So we'll go ahead and get three here. We're also gonna get three in the DNA market, getting a Stegosaurus, Tyrannosaurus Rex, and a Brontosaurus. Then we'll take out four for the Boneyard. 
getting an Ankylosaurus, Triceratops, Stegosaurus, and Triceratops. And in our hand, we have a Raptor, Tyrannosaurus, and another Raptor. That's one thing I don't want to build any more of. But since we are starting with those, they are clever. So during a Rampage check, in addition to the normal damage, suffer, suffer one Visitor Fatality on a Slash Result. Uh, we are starting with four victory points for each. So we've got five, so I've moved this track up to 20. And for reputation, we get two for each of those. So starting here with 10, I don't think that's gonna matter, but it's a good habit to get set in. And of course, each one of them needs one square, which they have already in a fence. Since we're going ahead looking at our board, we also have a, I don't know if you can see that, it's real small print, basic hotel. So we've got housing for two people. And on the board, we started with a watchtower. So what this is going to allow us to do, we're going, we are going to get two victory points at the end of the game out of this. But once per phase, it will allow us to ignore one slash result. All right, manipulation cards. We're going to get two of these to start with. So both of those being rapid gestation. So destroy one non-mutant dinosaur in your park. Immediately place mutants. Into your park equal to the DNA card requirement of the destroyed dinosaur. So two cards right off the bat that I don't see me playing. And when playing solo, unless told otherwise, you want to remove your infest hotels, infiltrator cards, misdirection, research pact, DNA theft, and whistleblowers. Won't be using those in normal solo. Got our five scandals down here. Our two goat meeples, our four workers plus the one for season four, our five raptors, we've got our victory points for those, an additional blocking market up at the farm, and we're ready to go. So from our scenario, steps one through three, mean we collect half of our max visitor capacity. So we'll bring in two people, we receive one credit for each visitor. So we're up to five credits. We're gonna draw some random tiles for our city center. So we'll give our facility bag a nice shake. Three cards coming out. So one of which is a DNA archive. So at the end of the game, gain one victory point for each unique species of DNA card in the boneyard. Then we have a mutant exhibition. Each pair of mutants on your island is worth one reputation. And lastly, a goat farm. During upkeep, gain one goat meeple after feeding. So we'll place those in the city center. Oops, almost forgot about our breaking news. So I've got those cards they talked about. Give those a shuffle. And the first upcoming is, if you have two or more occupied hotels, resolve a rampage check for a dinosaur in your park. So note to self, don't build any more hotels. So the scenario said we skipped doing any more on that the first round, and now we get to place our workers. So to feed all these hungry raptors, we're gonna need more goats. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to the farm and pick up some goats. Got to do something about all our scandals. So we're heading over to the agency which will give us two manipulation cards. So we've got offshore contractors. Search all face-up facility stacks at the city center. Purchase one, fa one facility at a four credit discount to a minimum of one. And reinforce pins. Place five free fences into your park. Ignore the next negative rampage check result. Uh, keep this card as a reminder until used. Both of those are useful. And we also get to discard the Scandal. Next, I think we're gonna go over to the uplink, play one of our manipulation cards. So search all face-up facility stacks at the city center. Uh, purchase one and a four credit discount. And this will be discarded. We are gonna grab the goat farm for two and set that on the board right there. 
Then we're going to go outsource some work. We're going to pay two credits, so we'll get one back. So we can use a, an occupied space. We're going to use the farm again. So I'm nervous of rampaging raptors. So three more goats to our goat farm. Then we're a little broke, so we're going to go to the ferry to collect three credits. So that will end our open season. So on to upkeep. We've got to feed all these guys. So five goats go away. We check for rampage, nothing to rampage at this time. We gain three victory points for every two visitors and these visitors leave alive. So three victory points on our track. We gain victory points from our dinosaurs and facilities, which is 20. So up to 23. Then we gain resources from dinosaurs and facilities. So we're gonna gain one goat. Call all our workers back. And advance the season and do it all over again. So we start getting half of our max capacity. Two visitors come in. We get a credit for each. So two credits coming in. Resolve the breaking news. So disaster, unsupervised tourist taunts a dinosaur. If you have two or more occupied hotels, resolve a rampage check for a dinosaur in your park. We only have one occupied hotel, so that won't trigger for us. And then upcoming, Dinosaurs recognized as protected species. Anytime a dinosaur meeple was placed on your island during the season, you may discard a scandal. All right. Oh, I did forget, once one of these is emptied, we immediately replace it. So that was replaced with a memorial statue. And that is worth just five victory points at the end of the game if it's undamaged. And of course, for this phase, we are going to get three more to put on top of those. First one is a biodome. So that one does allow us to put any dinosaur in there and it counts as their limit. Then we have an animatronic T-Rex, which is worth two reputation. So we can see inside this symbol here, there's two dots and that tells us it gets us two reputation from the symbol those dots are inside of. And then when he, we have a medium hotel, which will hold up to three visitors. Now our actions. First thing we'll do is go to the farm because we know we've got mouths to feed. So three goats takes us up to seven. We'll then jump down to the city center. We're gonna use the market and sell a T-Rex. So we're gonna get four money there. So it comes in on the side, moving the brontosaurus to the graveyard. And we'll get four credits. And the second action, we're gonna purchase three fences for two. So we'll go ahead and just put three fences around here. So we've got an extra one there. Then we'll go up to Dinogenics. Completing a set, so we need two DNA cards to create another Raptor. And that's gonna get us four more victory points per round. Our reputation goes up two. And we bring another Raptor into the park. Another mount to feed, but because, ooh, that's next turn. I don't wanna do that yet. We're gonna take that back one step. I wanna do that next turn, not this turn. Well, you can see where I'm headed anyway. We'll go ahead with building the fences there. Instead, we'll have this guy go over to the agency to get us two cards. So more rapid gestation and strong arm the market. Draw up to two facility, draw up to two facility tiles to the second, third or fourth spaces of the city center. Then take one city center action of your choice for each worker currently deployed at the city center. And that removes the scandal token also. 
Then we'll check out the uplink. We're going to play some reinforced pins. Place five free fences into your park. Ignore the next negative rampage check result, and we'll keep this as a reminder. So five more fences. Not sure what we might build, but we've got options. Then lastly, let's go get some DNA. We'll get two DNA cards here, finding a Triceratops and a Raptor. That ends our open season. Upkeep, we've got five mouths to feed, so we lose five goats. No reason for anything to rampage. We've got two visitors that were happy, so we get three victory points. Going up to 26. Then we're going to get 24 more victory points. That'll take us up to 50. I'm sorry, we don't have that four yet. So 46. Gain a goat from her goat farm and get her workers back. Advance to season six. We get two new visitors, which gets us two credits. Resolve the next breaking news. This one goes away. Now we get any time we place a dinosaur meeple, we remove a scandal. And upcoming, each player with two or more dinosaurs must either destroy four fences or damage one building. Well, I'm glad we got that other card then. All right, we're gonna get three more buildings. First one is another guard post. Next is a newsroom. So whenever you place a new dinosaur for any reason, gain two victory points. And then we have a memorial statue, getting us five victory points at the end of the game if undamaged. All right, another turn. Now we want to play our raptor. So we'll go up here, turn in these to make another raptor, bringing him in there. That's going to trigger us losing a scandal. Gain our four victory points and we we'll still have our two reputation there. And these will be discarded. We need some goats. Off to the farm. We are going to go to side A to get two DNA cards, getting two Triceratops, just wanted one. Then we're gonna go turn in some more DNA, spinning two of these. So he wants a pin of one, it's a herd animal. Gain an additional victory point in dinosaur value for every two Triceratops in a shared pin. But we're just bringing in one. We already have a pin pre-built. Our victory points goes up two. Because of this card, we lose a scandal. And reputation goes up one. Then for last action, I think we'll go up to site B. That allows us to draw three cards, keep one and discard the other two. So we've got a T-Rex, Brontosaurus, and a Stegosaurus. I'll keep the Stegosaurus. So that ends open season. Now we've got a feeder Dinosaurs. We've got six. So there goes six goats. So no one's gonna rampage. We gain three victory points for these guys being happy. So one, two, three. We'll then gain 27 for our dinosaurs, which takes us to 76. We'll gain one goat from our goat farm, then grab all of our workers back. and advance. So this is our last season. So two visitors come in. They pay us some credits. We resolve the next breaking news. 
So each player with two or more dinosaurs must either destroy four fences or damage one building. So one, two, three, and four fences gone. This is our last season, so no point looking at any more news. Three more random buildings. All right, one is a geology lab. When deploying a worker to site B, you only discard one DNA instead of two. We've got a biodome, counts as a fifth pin for any size for up to two compatible dinosaurs. And a petting zoo. During upkeep, gain one victory point for each species with at least two dinosaurs in your park. All right, this is our last turn to do something cool. We know we need goats. So we're going to the farm for three. We know we need six goats. That's not gonna cut it. So we're gonna do some outsourcing, spending two credits to use the farm again for three more goats. We've got one more scandal hanging around I think I wanna deal with. So we'll go off to the agency to get two manipulation cards. So we've got fresh meat. Now well, that would have been nice earlier. So we can gain four goats or destroy a dinosaur in your park to gain six goats and two DNA cards or some more reinforced pins. And that clears our last scandal token. So we are gonna to go to the uplink, playing one of our manipulation cards. So draw up to two facility tiles to the second, third or fourth spaces of the city center. Then take one city center action of your choice for each worker currently deployed at the city center. Actually, now instead of the uplink, we're just gonna to go to the city center. We will purchase a facility. So seven coins to get the biodome. And we'll go ahead and place that over here next to our goat farm. Then we're gonna use the market to buy a stegosaurus. Nope, that's not gonna work. Rethinking this last turn, it's not working for me here. You get my seven coins back. All right, back to the city center. We are gonna spend four to buy a petting zoo. And then two or three fences. So one, two, and three. And final action, we're going up to Dinogenics. We do not have a complete set, but we have a mixed set. So we're gonna create a mutant. So we'll take one mutant dinosaur, throw him in there. So he's an omnivore. But we can feed him two goats once per upkeep phase to place an additional mutant into your park. Two victory points. Does need just a one space minimum fenced habitat. That's going to conclude our actions. So upkeep. One, two, three, four, five, and six goats for our six raptors. No one's going to rampage. Two visitors left happy, three victory points. Then we're gonna get 28 victory points. Taking this up to 107, we will gain a sheep. Then with our petting zoo, we'll gain one victory point for petting the raptors, I guess. Bring all our workers back. and advance the overlay. So now it's end game scoring. And before we finish scoring, I'll just go over, this is easy difficulty of the others. I mean, we've got mediums. So two medium difficulty scenarios, two more mediums, one more medium. And then once we get to sc scenario seven, it'll get hard for Eight is hard, along with nine, and 10 is very hard. So varying difficulties on these. I'm playing the easiest one just for demonstration. So in-game 
scoring. We get facility points. So each of these facilities Zero points for that one. Two, four, and six. So we're getting six more. So up to 114. And for dinosaur variety, each player scores three victory points for every unique species in their park in a valid habitat. So we have three different unique species and three valid habitats. So that's gonna be nine more points. So 123, then we'll get one victory point for every three credits. So that's one more DNA cards. We don't have any and no scandals. So we'll end with 124. So for our final scoring, as the years went by, the Malapoint Park, perhaps in no short because of its prime location, became a respectable, if slightly dangerous vacation spot. And that is the basics of Dinogenics. As always, I hope you enjoyed this playthrough, so please click on the like button below and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.